It tries to connect the academy, research, and the industry, introducing algorithmic design and digital fabrication. Currently, focus on the development of responsible systems to the merge and intertwine of areas such as architecture, computation, and biology. And when I say that he is uh, now at Rio, he is actually at Rio. Okay? So we will try a connection by Skype. And if, 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 if something is wrong, it's not my fault, it's David's fault. Okay? Always. Always David's fault. Okay? When you can reach. Okay, the subject is form finding and generative systems a theoretical and applied research project. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to, to thank to the, the organizing committee, uh, David Vienna, uh, George Vaz, and uh, frankly, Murai. Uh, I would also like to congratulate my colleagues, LEMO colleagues from Rio that, that are in the room. Hopefully, Daniel, Daniel Lenz, uh, Pedro Engel, and Vitor Sandenberg. Uh, so, my presentation is titled Form Fine Generative Systems. Uh, do you have feedback? How is it the sound? No, it's okay. no I, was, I was only trying to, to take this video last time. Okay. So the sound is good so far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my presentation is called Form Finding and Generative System. As I said, I'm from Rio de Janeiro Federal University. And I will divide the presentation in two parts. One is related with the theoretical and applied research. And the other one is more about the lab, LEMO, and some material experiences, digital fabrication and algorithmic design. So this is start far away in a distant planet with a, with a group of students, uh, mainly from the undergraduate uh, course in architecture. And uh, we started a, a research project at uh, the highlight will be the, the seminar and the workshop. But for that, we did preparation about uh, studying the problem, other applications, and uh, uh, how to use the tools we, we should uh, we teach. And then uh, after this, we, we analyzed the results. We are uh, preparing uh, now the book of the event uh, together with some papers. So this, this uh, happened with a... a, a, a a scientific committee to, to help in the different areas with the specialists and with partner universities uh, from Brazil, United States, Portugal, Germany, Argentina, and other parts of Brazil. And that we articulate with a local group of students that do research, guide research, uh, local support team, and uh, also documentation team of the process. And uh, the high moment was uh, this uh, seminar workshop. So LEMO form finding generative system aimed to deepen the theoretical and practical development of algorithmic architecture for a new generative process in design. So uh, the mathematical development at the end of the 19th century brought a set of new procedures to find design solutions based on information theory and system theory. This process has been applied in our research as engineering, well design, human planning. However, given the mathematical computational content is applicable in design, they are scarce. So the event aimed to research on generative tools computational techniques such as cellular automata, health system, genetic algorithms, and, and shape grammars. The, the idea was to understand how 
small businesses can be translated and applied to solve kind problems. So the event was supported by a committee I already mentioned with a specialist in this technique. So we had five groups, our cellular automata with Victor Stardenberg that you will explain later, paper, uh, another with LCs, with one with genetic algorithm and with shape grammars, which Len present also. And connected with these four uh, techniques, we had uh, an interaction uh, team that was uh, dealing with VR and, uh, and uh, augmented reality that was working in parallel with this. So, uh, in a way, we, we tried to join art, science, technology. Since long time ago, uh, architects and, and, uh, and humans are, are interested in, in these forms that are made by nature and try to understand how these forms emerge. And they, they, they start to look at this, this kind of rule, uh, recursive rules of growth that we can find in any scale of nature. And uh, first, this was too difficult to understand, but then we, we, we started with an approach trying to understand nature. First, maybe it was uh, too mimetic, uh, too deterministic. So we see here some, some examples of this research, but then we, we started engaging more in the processes, in the tools, so we look at some bad, uh, a more free uh, way. So uh, this, this image also shows some uh, kind of recursive fractal. And here, for example, we, we see a system that is synthetic, that is generated by man, in a way, is a, a second nature that we are using. But this, this second nature, this idea of joining art, science, and technology, still a difficult uh, approach. Uh, the artistic side, for example, we see work of this Spanish uh, sculptor, Gilida, relied on the development of his tool, shaped his own work. So the knowledge about material uh, how to shape the tool uh, is not an explicit uh, knowledge, but is something he, he, he gathers with experience. And uh, also these other artists, Tapies, he this wireframe uh, sculpture that he gets a technique also and way of working with material. The same way he does with his own hands to get his painting. And uh, this is a different knowledge. Other artists was uh, still more focused on mathematics. So, but Mr. Fuller uh, uh, approach. So in this case, uh, the type of knowledge is explicit, is mathematical. So it's a different uh, knowledge. Also, uh, different from the uh, physicians or scientists, chemistry, as, such as Mary Curie. Another scientist uh, use other tools and also imagination, for example, to understand the DNA molecular and to somehow formalize it in a system. And uh, other scientists or artists, uh, or maybe both uh, architects, they, they rely on different approaches, a uh, more formal approach of Cousier, we would say that it's in a way more mat mathematical, and also Zadid, but she has other kind of mathematics to, to bring to life her creation. And, uh, so what I'm trying to argue here is like a traditional process, the author, he works his own tools and he does kind of uh, unique work. And uh, in a serial process, uh, Corbusier 
would uh, use today with a computer, for example, he would produce uh, a serial product that is uh, it's like a, a form uh, uh, and reform. You can have uh, a car any color that you want, as long as it's black. So the the choice is a bigger choice, but still limit. And then when we, we pass to the algorithmic process, we have an author, but we have kind of artificial intelligence, the cloud. We are expected to do 1,000 solutions or 1 million. The process is a little different. So uh, in this case, we have a generative system. And this generative system, they normally they start with an idea and we codify kind of a rule or a characteristic in an algorithm. And then we use the, the computer uh, to translate this, this code and give us some results. But this process, it, it can get different as it has a, lead, a feedback loop with the designer that changes the uh, equate the parameters and then changes the algorithm to change the results or changes the, the parameters in the code to, to evolve his own solution. So, uh, and he expects to get different output, the family of solutions. And in a way, he's working with, uh, in, not in a direct way with the, with the matter or with his own hand, but he's in an indirect uh, way. So there is a, a kind of a problem how to incorporate technology to architectural design and to, to add to this kind of our classical way of knowing tools and materials. Because this is also related with this segregation between art and science. Uh, we, we tend to think about art as to define problems, and science is more uh, associated with uh, well-defined problems that we can uh, get in an algorithm. And uh, Dr. Tertius talks about the application of the computer uh, in both situations, I would argue, and he makes the distinction between computation and computation. He also argues that both can are useful and, and uh, together they form algorithmic design. Well, but let's talk about the difference. The computerization in, in terms of design process works more with subjective uh, ideas, with perceptions, uh, with qualitative information. Uh, but the computation has a, a more rhetorical, a more uh, formal uh, way of approaching problems is more rational as a reduction of the problem with quantitative information. And uh, the type of geometry, in this case, they are different. One is for more for representation, the other is more focused on generating solutions. Also the tools in computerization. The, the computer can could be used as a hammer in a way, so it's more instrumental. It works more with automation, repetition, Mechanization, so in a way, to go from all to the part. And the computation is more related with the, uh, the, the process, the generative processes, and uh, uh, will the, and uh, works more from the part to the whole. So, uh, also the results of computerization, in a way, they are more related with the classical individual style and authorship. And the computation, the, as computer is also a, a part or an author, there is an indetermination to see the, the authorship. So in terms also about the exploration, innovation, in a way the tools, they, they help us to discover something that already exists. The computation has the uh, or emerging process we, we can create the new, the artificial, the, the unknown. So, uh, 
because the procedures are that we, we both need this authorization and computation. So we we must bring in a way more the artistic uh, uh, tools for computation of scientific. Okay. So we, we were in this reference of uh, Costa Terzidi, algorithmic architecture as important uh, uh, literature. And also here in South America, there is the, the work, a seminal work by Gabriela Celani, the creative cat on the 90s. And uh, actually we, we, we found more uh, references to, to generative design in other areas uh, as uh, not in design or architecture. This one is from um, uh, a German reference. Uh, so uh, these 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 tools actually, uh, because of their mathematical uh, origin, they, they are less uh, spread in design in architecture. So in this research, we separated it in different tools. We could uh, research more about the tools, not only about uh, the approach. So we, we started with a shallow automata that we, we have a, a rule uh, of a cell in relation to the neighbor cell. And only by changing uh, generation, this, this relation uh, gives, gives way to uh, uh, an emergent form. And uh, so, in a way, the, the form uh, grows uh, according to same rules, local rules. This has been applied in a in, uh, project, but like in a uh, project of here we can see uh, application, or also in some installation like Fujimoto. And uh, we see some more. And also less in, the, in housing. Another technique that we, we studied was L system. An L system is based on uh, the growth of an algae, uh, unicellular uh, organism. And it, it's also a, a simple mechanism where we have uh, an initial axiom, would be the letter A, and we have two rules. For example, A is replaced by A T, and B is replaced by A. So if we start with the axiom A, we'll get A B, and in the third generation we'll get A B from A, and A from B. So if we follow this, this recursive rule, we'll have a growth according to certain rules. This could be shown in a graphical way, for example, if we have this, this triangle and we replace one of the, uh, the sides of uh, this spike shape, we'll get a star. Depending how many times we replace this, we'll get a, a fractal cushion, uh, like the snowflake by, by Cox. This has also been applied to divisions, for example, this, this one is also coded in, in shape ramp, but it's a division uh, of cells that is not on uh, uh, um, different from the, the one in half. And if we, we repeat this process, we'll end up with a, a merging design that uh, we can expect. This also has been applied in, in doing uh, other experiences here, more volumetric uh, approach. And here some, some way of growth that is more directional. It also depends on the, not only on the rules, but on the shape that we use to follow the rules. Here we have an example from Terzidis of, of, of the growth in different uh, parameters, so different algorithms that follow a box. And we also study some pioneers' work as Paul from Western London. And uh, he used Elsons as meshing structures that grow 
in steel layer structures according to certain local condition. Here we see the, the work of Michel Heitmeyer that, you know, he is more plastic. He, he uses our systems to, to have a kind of a ornamental uh, form. That, that then he, he built these installations using 3D print and uh, he gets this kind of second nature. This second nature doesn't in interest so much because it's a closed system. It's not having a feedback with the with the with an environment. And we, we looked uh, for scholastic health system. So the, the growth is not predeterminated, but it changes with the uh, local conditions or with the uh, probability. Uh, we, so uh, in a way we, we start looking at not so direct deterministic logic, but we see a uh, different way of, of different logic. Also in the genetic output, we, we study, uh, they were used more in, as optimization tool to, to get a, a better uh, structural uh, solution using less material, but, but as architect, it interests us so much more like the formal output also related with uh, the application of genetic algorithms for facade uh, and or to use uh, the composition device to generate solutions. Here we see the work of Carlos de la Barrera. And uh, so the way of using the tool, if you're an engineer or if you're an architect, of course it's different. So we, we we gathered examples of the participants in the workshop to uh, to show a little the way we, we, we use these different techniques as a, a here to grow a structure depending on local conditions or here we see more material uh, system with the feedback uh, uh, the material. And also, we, the, the first uh, group will be like shape grammars. And the shape grammars that we've known, they are, they are very formal. Most of them top down the earth system. Uh, so we have an order, and we have the part and the division of the part. So if we get these rules, we get the code. But also, they, they, they have bottom up shape grammars that interest us more as we follow a certain number of rules, we get a result. And we don't uh, the, for, the final form, but we, we transform it in a problem. So we, we apply a different part to, to solve in this case is to have bench with three, uh, three parts. And, uh, so this is from Mitchell, one of the uh, pioneers of the digital uh, uh, design, computational design. Also, shape graphs they've been used in an uh, analog way, uh, study law, uh, and I'm sure there is a lot of uh, <clears throat> someone from Lisbon there, listening. And so here we see the application of uh, shape grammars to compose uh, uh, a tile uh, from an artist to, to road system, and also uh, to um, this gap that is the Formal shape grammars and material. Some some other uh, experiences use uh, physical models. So uh, shape grammars in use for more time. Uh, here we see an example for a for pseudo uh, generative artist. So he creates many different uh, cities by changing some variable. Here we see some application, like in, in, in Venice, uh, uh, kind of a collapse. Also, these generative uh, shape grammars and other examples, so more connected with typology and growth. And then there are some, some cases that these, these different tools, they could blur. Because here we, we could do it by cellular automata, a shape grammar, or if I else is. 
So we try to, to find uh, uh, what these two have in common and what they, they are different. So the, our question in the preliminary research was what is in common between these two? So all of them, they start with a rule, a certain rule and uh, the axiom. And then we have a loop that we repeat a task recursively. And then here, something we enter, it's not a formal repetition or all, always the same repetition. So we introduce some probabilistic or environmental influence on the, the growth and then interaction with this environment. So this environment gives back a feedback that will change the, the form, the, the rule or the loop. So this, this is what we intend to use uh, this, this kind of sequence to, to change a little bit these techniques so we can uh, have a better interaction. So uh, now I would like to show the video with some of the results with sound. Nesse evento aborda um dos temas mais antigos e atuais do projeto, como encontrar ou gerar a forma. Nesse quarto evento do LAM, convidamos pesquisadores e participantes de vários lugares do Brasil e do exterior para encontrar essas respostas connosco. Numa experiência imersiva, trabalhamos com vários sistemas matemáticos aplicados em projeto. Estes sistemas são autômatos celulares, health systems, algoritmos genéticos e gramática da forma. A ideia é abrir a caixa preta explorando sistemas com feedback. Assim, a forma deixa de ser algo previsível e monótono para ser algo imprevisível e mágico. Os autômatos celulares são sistemas computacionais que produzem um grid de células que se desenvolve através do tempo de acordo com o estado de vizinhança. São sistemas sintéticos que produzem comportamento imprevisível. Os cell systems são baseados em regras de crescimento celular. Se reescrevem formando novos elementos. Essa descrição não considera o contexto. O desafio aqui é que o crescimento reaja ao ambiente, como acontece na natureza. Os algoritmos genéticos eles são inspirados na natureza e eles procuram uh, conciliar, combinar as diferentes características de uma mesma forma, uh, procurando a evolução ao longo do tempo. A gramática da forma ela é um sistema de manipulação das formas, realizando adição, subtração ou transformação delas. O projeto, então, é o resultado da aplicação dessas regras. Os meios de representação tradicionais não são capazes de expressar a complexidade dessa sociedade atual. E, partindo dessa premissa, nós criamos um estúdio paralelo ao workshop de investigação sobre realidade virtual, realidade aumentada, e uma série de ferramentas usando HTC Vive, Cardboard, e alguns softwares como Unity, e testando plugins para começar em tempo real com o Grasshopper e as demais ferramentas de design paramétrico usadas no workshop. A partir disso, a gente pretende não só investigar a realidade virtual como uma interface para representar a arquitetura, mas também investigar as questões do espaço, da espacialidade, é, da materialidade e esboçar cenários possíveis para a sociedade. Estou achando esse workshop incrível, porque ele vem em um momento em que tanto alunos de graduação, como de pós-graduação, como professores é, estão encontrando a sua identidade, o seu fazer, o que é fazer arquitetura para eles. E então o workshop serve para aumentar os limites do, do que a gente pode fazer e de que arquitetura a gente pode produzir. A gente está sempre acostumada a todo aquele processo tradicional de pensar arquitetura e eu acho que aqui é uma nova proposta de que não é só isso, como é que seria a toda, toda a arquitetura se fosse pensada também com sistemas baseados em leis naturais, em leis da natureza. Então, acho que o desafio desse workshop é você entender esse, esse todo esse sistema e tentar aplicar na arquitetura. 
o meu grupo ficou com o celular autômata. Então, o que eu achei de mais rico nele, principalmente no celular autômata, dos quatro temas propostos, ele é o um único sistema vivo em que ele está sempre em constante mudança. Então, por isso que a gente quis aplicar em realidade virtual, que você consegue ver essa arquitetura movimentando ou em sempre em mutação. A gente está se apropriando de uma fachada de uma obra modernista, incluindo uma ideia mais abstrata, que é a questão da música, fazendo essa relação com o vocabulário e certas regras para recompor esses elementos em novas configurações potencializadas pelo uso do, do gravador. Participar do workshop para mim foi ótimo, porque eu já, já me formei aqui e para mim é um, é um desafio muito grande, porque eu gosto muito de explorar as formas, mas eu não tinha contato nenhum com o Grasshopper. E aprender a lidar com, com o raciocínio do programa e mexer em tudo isso, para mim está sendo um exercício muito legal de aprendizado e para melhorar né, a forma de pensar projeto. Ok? So you saw the video? <laughs> I didn't. Nobody answered. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's get back uh, from uh, what I what I left. So uh, in this this uh, project that we saw in this video. We, we have this kind of rule, recursive loop, with every degrees, interaction, feedback. But this is related to this kind of tool that are, that are computation in a way. And they also include this kind of rule change to have a, a generative system. But I also want to show some experiences that are more like serial experiences with digital fabrication, algorithmic design. So this is more related with the uh, uh, computerization or the use of tools, uh, in this case, implicit knowledge about matter and other knowledge that can uh, help the computation process. So uh, I work in a, in a team uh, that is mostly undergraduate uh, student uh, that they change from time to time. So we work in a kind of horizontal work where uh, where the enthusiasm makes the, the flow and the, the, the work go. So this is a, a nice characteristic for a lab, lab mode view. So for example, here we have an activity uh, of uh, cutting with a CNC from a group of students in the vacation who cut a, a project of, for one of the students. It was for a wiki half uh, construction without nail. So we built it in the university, and for most of the students, it was the first time to build anything. Uh, and this was actually the first week house in Latin America, and it's far the biggest. So uh, we like to build with this kind of uh, tools and computational processes. So here we have uh, the final result of this house, a wiki house by Clarice Wolf. And also we do a lot of of activities here, for example, we had a visit from uh, Tres Pastor okay? and the local team, uh, uh, Lemo, uh, was helping on the fabric in process of the pavilion. Here we see a, a family of solutions uh, developed with uh, and, and with uh, different surfaces, different type of surfaces. 
And here we, we receive a chosen pavilion and uh, we uh, double curve pavilion. And here we see the, the magic happening with the construction and testing the idea in to one scale. So the team finally uh, has a lot of fun and we end up with uh, building stuff and uh, understanding more about the process, incorporating in our daily life. Uh, we, we still have a very formal education and uh, this is another experience with the uh, rural survey uh, technology, technology park and uh, also people have fun to do this kind of installations to give some shelter and shadow in a, in a site. So here we see the this, this result of this wooden construction uh, and also always the team. And we are also connected with a network of uh, pub labs. Uh, you can find information of this in a uh, uh, this book, Homo Power, that is uh, gathers the different experiences in, in Latin America, which Lamo participated, and also workshops. We normally have uh, like the one uh, I've shown you before. Uh, we have uh, uh, every uh, year we have a big uh, workshop beside uh, several other smaller events. This one, for example, we. We use the Arduino and interactive uh, mechanism to build responsive shapes or systems. So again, the team. And uh, the most recent we, we built uh, was uh, a partnership with a German uh, uh, science technology between Brazil and, and Germany. And we, we used bamboo to, to build. So here we see the, our, our lab. We see the students presenting, and we see the hands-on experiences with material to, to know how to find form, how to form fight. And uh, also, low resources, uh, so we, we have to use uh, uh, connection systems like Apple Pies, and that are quick to build them and to, to get up. So here we see the Enrolled surface of the, of the structure and uh, the team construction and uh, learning. So uh, this this was the work I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope it inspired and uh, to be used. Thank you very much. Gonzalo? Yes? Can you hear me well? Perfect. Okay. Okay. Uh, questions, please, for Gonzalo? No questions? Everyone wants to have the cocktail now. Uh, uh, Gonzalo, I have one question for you. Uh, this is an experience that you are um, improving there uh, with the students uh, from the architecture course and the urbanism. Um, can you tell me um, uh, how this um, experience that they, they are having with these workshops uh, are changing mm -hmm. or not the way they think um, design process and how they approach design from those experiences on. Um, do you feel that this has some kind of real impact or is something that, um, in a way, it's a really interesting experience, but okay, it's just that, a really good experience, and uh, or not? Well, thank you, David. Uh, actually, uh, I, I think they have a huge impact. Because we, we have a very classic uh, teaching, they can learn how to code, when I arrived at Lemu, nobody know, knew how to code, 
how to use algorithm, how to use digital fabrication. So in three years, we, we, we have uh, achieved uh, a big difference. Uh, actually, uh, LAMO is a, a former uh, workshop that was almost abandoned. And now every student wants to go there and work there. So uh, it's kind of a, a propagation effect. So others and uh, and and they they, they they understand things very quick that from the pedagogical point of view is very different. So so they, they really enjoy this this hands on. Gonçal, great to see you. Great work uh, with the uh with the LAMO and what you've been doing. We already saw, had a, a moment last week with the Pedro Engel and uh, hopefully now with the rest of the team. Um, one of the things that I would like to, to ask you, and it, it's very nice to see that you managed to get this propagation effect and uh, because students are very easy to to appeal to and it, it, it's sexy, the, these things are, are, are challenging and they see that this is the future. How about the peers? your colleagues there, how are they accepting uh, the development and the success of LAMO and all these methodologies? Okay, uh, Rui, right? Yes. Thank you, Rui. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I would like to, to explain a little more because we uh, are very popular, not only because technology is popular, but because it changes the way of working. For example, other universities, they only allow students to access technology if they are doing a master or PhD, so it's not open. And you have to pay for the service. Here, we, we, we offer the common community uh, access to the machine. We have uh, uh, free uh, students that offer uh, volunteers to work the machines. That is also not common. So other, other workshops, only the technicians can work. It's not our case. We tell the students and they, they do it. So this is very different. Uh, also, we have uh, some, some, some problems with the professors that are not so keen on this technology. But what we do is we invite them to, to participate. And then they change their mind. So this propagation goes uh, from the, the interest, but also because of our attitude that also in Brazil is not so common to have an open, uh, it's not open source, but it's an open lab where you can try your ideas and, and the technology that is available. Well, congratulations on that, Gonzalo. Thank you. Thank you. Is that an experience that is some, in a way, within the university, or you are establishing um, uh, possible lines of work with industry, with uh, uh, commercial companies, and uh, uh, promoting future jobs for the students that are gaining that kind of skills? Well, that's also a good question. Uh, here is a, a cultural difference between the, the connection with industry. And uh, for example, if, if I want to, to have a partner at industry, I must have a foundation uh, to, be, to talk with me and with the industry. I cannot direct industry. So uh, the industries, they are separated from the university, at least the architectural part. This is a big challenge. Uh, so far, we, we established some partnership with the uh, other department and uh, the technology part. And uh, one of the works that I, sh I have shown is, is done with them. 
and we we develop uh, different pavilions with them. But uh, I would argue that here this uh, process is more uh, difficult. This this connection, this direct connection with industry. But uh, answering your question, the the students they find more uh, easily opportunities after they work with our team. They they like to hire people from lab, and uh, that's all good. Gonzalo, thank you. Uh, we'll meet you someday. Um, I would like to say that Gonzalo uh, was with me in 2006, uh, one of the persons that started all this experience that led us here today, because we start this series of workshops on digital architecture. Um, then those workshops become seminars and then symposiums with open calls. So it was uh, a path that we already had together. So it's always a pleasure to have you with us and you will always be in this symposium. Thank you, Gonzalo. And uh, now Thank it's time for cocktail that you won't have because you are on no, the I other won't. side of the Atlantic. So it's your problem. I want, pass me a glass. Sorry? I want a glass of fine port wine. Yes, I will have. Uh, I will drink a fine uh, port wine for you. And uh, so, okay. thank you for being here for this day. And we will close this first uh, uh, session day with a cocktail. I don't know where yet, but I think uh, Christina will tell us where. So follow her. She's the cocktail girl. So thank you. Thank you.